We're going live with this book right here. Hey, I'm a speed reader, man. I can get through this book. Can we get the weatherman's fan look? I have messed my hair up again this morning. When is it supposed to turn and storm? Right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. We on? We're about to be. I think we're live. Hey, jump over, get GTT. Good get time, GTT Tommy. jazzed. Dr. Morgan, what's up? Donna Hill, how are you doing? Thank you guys for getting on here. It's Thursday. It's the morning grind. It's 8.30. No matter what, we're going to do the morning grind. Dale Jr., how are you? Belinda, she said you're awesome. <laughs> It's one of our sponsors, Belinda. Oh, you know, you, you know Ryan Denny. <laughs> oh, Ryan Denny. He's do you go, hey, do you think you can beat him in I Can Jam? Man, one day I am going to get my arms done like him, dude. Mm -hmm. Man, man, that guy's a cool, cool dude. Cousin Charlie Ginger. Up, How you doing, man? Good to see you. The gingerbread girl is on here. How are you, Hunter McDonald? We're getting our energy up. I'm here, spitting. I'm so here. excited. You're hey, you're we're, 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 hey, weatherman's watching. Cousin Charlie, are you on? I'm on. I didn't know that. Hey, Tim, are you a narcissist? What's that? Are you a narcissist? Yeah, I, that's something we all struggle with. We all do. Yeah. Why are people so chicken to say I'm a narcissist? Are you a narcissist? I'm, I'm learning to be. I'm we're all narcissists. We're all. We all need to understand that we are narcissists. Yeah, but as a Some, mom, like. You yeah. have to take a step back. So you so Thomas and down. Everybody doesn't understand what narcissism is. So what is Explain an what a narcissist is. I think it's when you speak and look through your first your perception. You can only see yourself first. You don't really have understanding of other people. It's always your perspective. So a little bit of selfishness. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be a different type of narcissist. Well, we all <laughs> have it. I think <laughs> I think we would all be a lot better if we, instead of trying to fight this, just understand. Hey, let's get better and and, and understand. You need awareness that you're going to be selfish in your thoughts, in my opinion. We've got Tim Hooper in here. He's got energy. He may say something that contradicts. He's wrote a book. Right here, actually, it's four books. It's he ran over here. His eighty-eight push-ups. He ran over here. He actually had his he had his uh, babies, and he was pushing them, and he was doing like sub eight-minute miles getting over here. So, so today we're going to talk about energy, and I'm going to tell you I'm low today. He's going to help me get it up because I didn't work hey, out this morning. Not just kidding. <laughs> so, so this morning, I don't ever go to Starbucks, but this morning I didn't get my pre-workout drink in. I get my pre-workout. It's like five of these. Is it? Yeah, because I'm a drug addict. It's what my buddy Scott Nagy says. I'm addicted to that to to that caffeine rush. Mm. He says he says everybody's drug addicts. I say everybody's a a narcissist. So, so you're a junkie. Well, I think I think most people have become drug addicts and they don't even realize it because. What's being put in your food? It's drugs. Mm. We'll talk about that another day. But yeah. Tim, thank you for coming on here. I do have a question for you. Yeah. Where, in your opinion, does energy manifest from? Well, everything in the universe is matter and energy. It's all made up of energy. So everyone has energy. People say all the time, I want more energy. Well, you can't get any more energy. You are energy. Uh, you have to figure out what's stopping your energy. Oh. You have to figure out which way your energy is flowing. See, when I was a young guy, mm -hmm. I would, everyone called me the energy guy. In fact, I decided to write the book because everyone called me the energy guy. Did you have like a little ADD? Were yeah, you, like, over, I, oh, were you like a little German all kid running time. around over there with your... <laughs> hey, oh, 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 doing your head. <laughs> no, so, we didn't do any of that. Actually, you got thrown in jail if you did that over there. Uh, uh. Um, no, no, no. So, good, good sight, Tommy. Good, good sight, Tommy. Tommy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I grew up in Germany, came over to, to the U.S., very insecure... Um, mm. And just just a just a, a yeah you know, everyone has a past right everyone mm -hmm. has a past but mm -hmm. um, very very insecure took a job and started climbing that, in that job like crazy and uh, everyone called me the energy guy and uh, and it was one of those things I live for that accolade I go home and crash I didn't have much for my wife you know energy left I wasn't plugged in the community I just I was killing it at the job Crunch. and everything to me it was about winning you put me mm -hmm. on an assembly line I would beat everybody mm -hmm. you know it wasn't about team it was about I. Timmy, yeah. narcissism yeah. and its finest yeah. mentality. And so, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, what happened was, um, 25, I woke up. 25. Hey, before you keep going, hey, everybody, <laughs> thank you for getting on here. It's, uh, the, it's the morning grind. Please like, comment, share the stream. We're promoting our buddy Tim. 
got but energy, here's baby. the book got energy he is a guy that's really gotten a lot of attention in his space so um we do appreciate him coming on here the way we can help him is by getting him more attention so if you would please comment like Share the love. Thank you. Where can they I, get the book? That we didn't say that yet. So where can you get well, the book? Well, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere books okay. are sold um, online. But uh, you can also go. It's it's <clears throat> it's cheaper, Tommy. You like deals, right? Yeah. Well, I like to help my time, friends. Timehooper.com. Timehooper.com. Tim E. Hooper.com. Okay. Okay. And, and and ten dollars every book. Ten dollars goes to St. Jude. So go, go. If, if you're a team out there, if you're a, if you're a business owner, grab a grab now, a bunch for your team. Good we'll come morning. Signing. Yeah. Heather yeah. Bill, what's <laughs> up, girl? So Tim does go around and he does speak. <clears throat> if your company is a little flat, he comes in there. Disengaged, now, come on. Now we only do this for about 15 minutes, so I'm very, very narcissistic. <laughs> I love to make everything about me. But I like to jump around because that's how I am. So you're uh, you're you're going through corporate very quickly. Yeah. So you're, you're cl climbing, on. climbing. You know, I'm plugged in the job. Got a good, fa you know, two kids, one on the way. So three, um, family of three. We're plugged into church. We're looking really good on the outside. Mm. And uh, and my wife, you know, we we have a pretty good relationship. But she came from a background that was uh, a little bit of um, some just some difficulties. And so um, so there was some insecurities there and insecurities here. So there was a lot of conflict, Tommy. We wouldn't not have it was like we just didn't talk about certain things you know so we had a, a good relationship did y'all talk about your addiction? per se were you talking about your addiction no she didn't know mm. she had no clue so here i am it's just a really good facade and at 25 though um it was my birthday and i talked about it in chapter six that's where the journey started for me was uh, my brother see he died at 25 mm -hmm. and on, on that birthday i just it, my, my mental switch tur something turned on i was like he didn't get the chance to live past 25. And from that day, I made this comment. I like looked up to the sky. We were just kind of, I was like talking to him. And I just said, it, you know, because right at first I felt like this is my year. You know, he died at 25. There's no way I'm making it. You know, it's, it was just weird. Yep. And I was like, no, 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 no. So I ran outside with February sky. I look up and I'm just like, Paul, I'm like, every day past this day will be a bonus. Mm -hmm. So with that bonus mentality is what I call, call it. Um, every day is a bonus. You know, tomorrow's gone. So I talk about making peace with your past. Tomorrow is an empty guarantee, but mm -hmm. we ought to have huge vision that's pulling us out of bed for tomorrow. That's right. So put in huge vision. So make peace with your past, plan for the future so that you can show up fully present today. Woo! He's, and, hey man, yeah, he's, so, he's almost taking over the morning grind. We're going to allow him for you. So, so. Well, you're fully present here with all your people. No, this. we do. We do like to answer questions. We do like to engage. Somebody said something about, asked something about him. I can't read it. Oh. It's a few questions back. George Peters? Mm -hmm. I've been kind of following you since you came back from Vegas with your motivational speech. Is so I put a, a little of your proof in my pudding, and it has worked. My roofing business has really, really taken off more than that. May have been to me. Right. That's you. That's all you, baby. Uh, hey, your wife you. makes amazing clothes. Mm -hmm. Your boy, oh yes, she does. If we <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you the first time I tearing it dress. Yeah, the, the, the first time the first time I was around Tim, and I'm going to always be very honest and very open. Uh oh, always my first few times I was around him, okay, we're in a gym setting, Rod Key brought brought him in. Hey, Rod. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm sitting there, I like to be, hey, I'm all, hey, I'm. it's all about me. But he came in there into this room, and he's got this big, inviting smile. He's always happy. <laughs> he's, he's just always Mr. Perfect, almost, where he attracts so much. And whenever we really want something, and we see other people... That has it. We get like him. We get all mad. Like, <laughs> Who the hell does this guy think he is coming in here outshining me, being so nice? But I guarantee you, there's people out there, Tim, that hate that about you, that hate how perfect you come across. Mm -hmm. But over time, I'm like, man, this guy is like the most awesome person that I've ever been around. He's mm -hmm. always uplifting, he's mm -hmm. always encouraging. I believe what you see from him is just who he is on the inside. But uh, those first few times, the selfishness of me, I was like, hey, now hold up. I, I got to get more attention than this guy right here. What is he, what is he doing coming in here? He's, he runs faster than everybody. He works out harder than everybody. But like he's saying, when he was on an assembly line, I believe that because I remember we did uh, a soldier's child a few years ago, and he pushed his, his children 
for a 5K, and he looked like a machine. I was like, man, how does he do this? So, um, I didn't run, but I mean, his work ethic, I, I, I've seen his, his work ethic in the gym and how hard he pushes himself. Yeah. But then he's just all smiles and he's just buddy, buddy. But here's, here's I, I, this is something I really want to know. Let's take whenever we come in to a job, we don't have a lot of energy that's just bumbling. You know, we don't have much fuel that day. Do you believe you just talk to yourself to get your energy levels up? Or some people, do they just, are they blessed to have more energy than others? What would you say to that? <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, I, different personalities ex exude energy in different ways. I believe that energy is not what I learned, what I thought I knew about energy, and I have realized I didn't have a clue when I started writing the book five years ago, is um, energy is your capacity to do work. That's it, your capacity to do work. So you take somebody who maybe a, 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 have a disability. Mm -hmm. What's their capacity to do work? And it's work, work that word in physics means create a result. So if there's no result happening, it's not walking around looking busy. It's not striving, striving, striving. A lot of us, because of something in the past, we have some sort of, you know, we have got a blame card against a manager, we got mm -hmm. something going on. We walk in, we already are, we're already stopping our energy with our, with our mentality. So we walk in, we have a grudge against this person, we've got um, the relationship at home that's not working out and we're just, we're all upset. Um, somebody honked at us in traffic and although they're already miles gone, we let that disrupt our energy. Mm -hmm. And so what happens then is we walk in a complete fluster and we've, we've basically short-circuited a lot of energy. How can you change that? So uh, I'll bring three, three. Or can you change it? Yes, First you, off, yes, can you can. You change yes, this? you can. Uh, you absolutely can. Um, what you decide, how you decide to respond, that's called emotional intelligence. Now, catch this. Do not miss this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Oh, your, pay attention. Your emotions are your energy in motion. So you want to know how energized you are. Here's your benchmark. Okay, just right now. It was this. This kind of like weird. Like, what is energy? What's my energy? Your energy. Your emotions are your energy in motion. So if you become, um, you know, sensationalized towards something, or you get really upset at somebody mm -hmm. honking at you, you can be pretty sure that for a long time this emotional generator has been allowed to run, forming habits, mm -hmm. and your emotions are running the, in the negative direction. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. You're not bad to feel bad. But if it's constantly happening for you, ask yourself, where are my emotions running away? And then, where are my emotions abounding? So if you feel love, like you get around your kids, you're just this love, like start living in more of those positive emotions. And so in my mind, it starts, for your energy, it starts with perspective. It starts with that bonus mentality. Mm -hmm. Today is a bonus. I get to, most people have to do today. I get to do today. Mm -hmm. When you flip that, or I'm blessed to do today, or I'm thankful I get to do today, mm -hmm. whatever it is for you, when we can shift between I have to, I have to do my job. I mm -hmm. get to do my job. I, I'm a mom. Man, I'm a mom. I get to be a mom. Whenever mm -hmm. you shift to Some a things just gratitude, are gratitude. Yeah. yes, yeah. when you shift to a gratitude, there's this, there's this scripture that, that I always was taught, and it was like, in everything give thanks. And as I started studying, and gratitude is literally the immediate perspective switch. Boom. Gratitude will change yes. everything. It will. Um, and it also makes the, and, and people say in the universe, the universe is attracted to gratitude. Mm -hmm. It's abundance. It's an mm -hmm. abundant mentality. Mm -hmm. So like when I walked in the gym, and I've been there before, you have, when you see somebody that might look like they're outshining you, you have what's called a scarce mentality. Mm -hmm. You think, mm -hmm. oh, there's not enough to go around. I got to go get mine. Mm -hmm. Instead of realizing, no, I'm mm -hmm. Tommy and I might not smile all the time. I worked around engineers. They never smile. These guys mm -hmm. are just like... But they created these huge machines that Tommy, I couldn't even figure out. Math, finance, all that stuff. I hire that out, man. Mm -hmm. I'm a personality type. I'm like a high I. Mm -hmm. My C is like boom in the mm -hmm. basement. Right. So it's going to, energy is going to exude itself different ways. What we have to turn inside internally and ask ourselves is, where are our emotions running? Can we walk into any environment and be like fully behind this guy? fully for Kathleen and her, you know, her family and you're just you're you're abundant because when you rise, when the when the tide rises, all ships rise. Well the these shows 
Hey, can you repeat that and write that down? <laughs> now, now here you, you've said something that I really, really want to talk about now. We're kind of going a different direction. But can you code the meaning of likability? Because I think you understand what, it, what you need to be a likable person. I believe in life, people that are highly likable get treated different. They get treated unfairly. They get favorable attention. I was telling mm. Nicholas this the mm. other day. And so what you were talking about is how the the uh, the universe rewards gratitude. So I really think that's a concept of a likable person. Mm. Dig into that for me. So in chapter four, I talk about energy's attraction. All right, watch this. Do not miss this. The sun and the core of the earth, that is where we draw all of our energy. Mm -hmm. You've got the nickel and the iron whirling around in the core of the earth, and you got the sun and that's where we get all of our energy, okay? Radioactive and you have thermal. Now, <clears throat> or, or radiant, I'm sorry. So the sun is radiant energy. Now, did the sun say anything this morning? Nothing. Did I didn't anything? hear it say anything. Okay, it but, it, it, but it rose, right? Mm -hmm. It rose. I, I don't care how many sunrise pictures I see, I like them all. I don't care how many sunset pictures I see. Facebook, social media is covered with them. When there's a gorgeous sunset, it's like everybody took the same picture in Murfreesboro, you know, and they mm -hmm. post it. You like them all. Why? Because they're gorgeous. They're attractive. All right? But the sun never said anything. And here's what I learned about energy's attraction. When you're positive energy inside, when your emotions, when you're first, here's what I say, when you're first whole, then full, then abundant. Wholeness, fullness, abundance. You can't abound to the world. A lot of us are empty and we're shit trying to shake it out. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. getting a huge vision for our life and living in that vision. Now I'm full, and then you just put your finger in the top of your Starbucks cup here, and psh, coffee's going to mm -hmm. spill. You just slosh it just a little bit, you're going to mm -hmm. spill coffee on your shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, Rainmaker's not supposed to drink coffee on a sales call, right? No, I'm just kidding. All right, we drank coffee on the GTT. So you tip your cup, it sloshes over. When you're full, when you're good energy, when you're positive, it's going to slosh over. But here's mm -hmm. the thing. You never had to say a word. You do your thing. People are attracted. Not likability is the person. I say this: stop, stop trying to be. Emma time. Stop trying to be likable. Be you. Go get a huge vision for your life and start living that vision. How can you create value in this world? Start doing it consistently. Be the sunrise every day. Get up, go to bed. Get up and do your thing. Yes, reach out, spread your rays out as far as you can reach. If it's somebody that is in your influence, reach out. A lot, and the resources will align themselves to you. Likeability starts with you stop trying to be likable and start mm. being you. Be oh, you're you. Good. You're beautiful. Woo. You're priceless. Be you. Live hey, you. I do, uh, Linda Fagans, she says she loves you. Oh, so, Linda. She, she is a... Mwah, she is, love you. Big hugs. Look, big hugs coming to you. There you go. <laughs> so, so um, if you were... First off, hey, is anybody else here? Uh, do y'all have? Does anybody have any questions? The one that they, thing that he's talking about is that I'm, I'm so attracted by him. It's, it's called favor and anointment. And so, if, if you know anything spiritual about it, he walks in those mm -hmm. two things. He has a tremendous amount of favor, mm -hmm. which brings attraction. And he's not looking for attraction mm -hmm. because God has anointed him with those things. And with that, there's an inner confidence that he walks in. He doesn't have to have it because he has it, and that exudes out. Mm -hmm. And that's what you talk about when he walks in the room. That's what that's what takes over the room. When Tim Hooper walks into a room, everybody gravitates towards him. And all he's doing is really being him. He's smiling. He's telling people how great they are. But I mean he he takes over a room. He takes over the presence when he when he walks into a room. So that's that's a great point, Weatherman. Mm -hmm. Cousin Charlie. I want to talk about something different. Yeah. How do you balance everything? Because I see you everywhere. I see you running with your family. H how do you balance all that? So I talk about being prioritized. I actually talked about being fully present to the Chamber of Commerce the other day. Here's three keys. <clears throat> Unplug, prioritize, and slow down. <clears throat> so my coach told me a long time, actually last year, I started running every day. And I set that goal because I was like, man, I'm launching this business. I'm going to stay fueled. I'm going to run every day. And halfway through the year, my coach was like, you need to take a break. You need to have Rocky. I mean, awesome coach. He told me, he said, you need to have a rest day. I'm like, no, 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 man. I got to run every day. And I had this hey, thing. He's never told me that, by the way. <laughs> so, um, so to answer your point, we can quickly, I mean, it is a constant, it is a constant look, an internal look to ask yourself this question. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Here's two keys. You must be and you must do. You must have both. 
-hmm. but one must come before the other, and that's called be. You must be first and then do. Many in our society are doing before we're being. And I will tell you, being is the greatest lever of all the doing. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. When you will first be, be you, I had to look internal and say, why am I doing that? My point was to prove that I can stay consistent with this running thing and all this. And I was like, no, I was wearing myself out. So Rock, he said, slow down. And there's, here's, so number one, unplug. I, I talk about media addiction a lot. Now I'm all over social media, it's a great tool. But I get on in the morning, I get on at noon, and I get on at night. In fact, after my kids are in bed, sometimes it's 9.30 when I'm posting, sometimes it's 10. What's the now, first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? First thing I do mm -hmm. is I text two people I love them. Ooh. Do you not go to social media first? No. Dang. No. I Maybe you're social, not an artist. I go to social media uh, after I text people I love them, and I get myself up. Either it's a run or with Rod Key, which I've been mm -hmm. a stranger from in the gym. And uh, I love you, Rod. Uh, he's awesome. And uh, I'm actually getting back with him uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, but you get on, you get on when, you're, when your mind is already plugged into your vision. So then I, re then I review my top three priorities for the day. Only three. People are, you know, we have a big to-do list. And I've, out of that, I'm like, you know, half of that stuff doesn't even need to happen. It's not even, it'll happen on its own or whatever. Top three priorities tied to my vision. What's going to move the book forward? What's going to move the speaking forward? What's going to do that? And then... Um, you get up and fuel, and by the time I'm fueling, when I'm either my shake or my breakfast, then I jump on social. Because now I've fueled my vision first, that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm not plugging in everyone else's vision, man. We go on and watch all these influencers on here, and they're all great, they're all wonderful. They keep me you motivated. But how much of that are we dependent on? Like, we're this car, we need to turn our own engine on. What we're doing is like, hey, Grant Cardone, hey, hey, Michael, you know, all these guys who are amazing, amazing at what they do, but a lot of times we're letting their vision light us instead of mm -hmm. our vision yep. light us. Mm -hmm. So get tapped in first thing in the morning to your vision, your life, and then be, be the light. Like you said, you love promoting people. Reach mm -hmm. out to people. I love you. And then from there, go and say, all right, now what can I do? What, what positivity? And then every morning I usually dump a quote on social media or share something. And that's just because I know there's moms out there whose kid was up all night sick or there's some, you know, cat ran away or, you know, you just don't know what's out there. Never feel guilted into encouraging the world, but because you're abundant, let yourself splash that over. But don't ever have to. If you start getting into, oh, I got to post my thing, then you're probably starting to run away. It's, it's starting to get um, an, an addiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's turned into a media addiction. So be careful. Be careful. Be first and then do. So does that answer your question? It does do you. Long yeah, answer? No, I, I, we appreciate that. We're running over our time. The mm. audience, seems, hey, they get restless and they, they tune us <laughs> out. But who, who, is, who really influenced you the most when you were... Um, Going when you were shifting 25, who was your well? Let me tell you who planted the first seed because you're gonna love this. All yeah. right, you're gonna love this. Chapter number 21. This short guy comes into my company. I was 19, I was fresh out of Germany. I'm competitive. I get called into a manager's meeting because this guy's coming in to speak. And he says this, and you gotta guess who this is. Okay, short guy, he had a he had a I always remember this a dark turtleneck and like an olive coat. On top. He doesn't wear that anymore, but this is when he first started. Okay, this was uh, 19, so that was uh, 11 years ago. All right, he was just getting started. He says, what do you want out of life? This ain't no practice life. This ain't no practice life. Who does that sound like? A little bitty guy, <laughs> no. A little short guy. Bald-headed. Michael Burke. And mm -hmm. he came into Turner Machine Company and gave his keynote, This Ain't No Practice Life. Mm -hmm. He gave out his little th thin book on leadership, and I read that thing. And I read Albert Schweitzer was in there, and he, he talked about, you know, you're, you, if you're an um, influencer, if you're doing this, you're a leader, you do this. I was like, I, my heart is there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to get there, but my heart was there. Mm -hmm. And so he, I talked about him in 21 because he l seriously lit the first lantern for me. He lit mm -hmm. the first light, and I followed that light, and I got there, and then my wake-up call happened, and then influencer after influencer. Now, you know, people like Brendan Bouchard and others who I've attracted to just because they're abundant mentality, mm -hmm. um, very non-competition, very abundant. Live in your vision. Be and then do, mm -hmm. and let that leverage all the doing. Kira Sloan's on here. She's always talking about how fast you run, by the way. Oh, Kira is amazing. She we, we did the gym. We did Mac together. Yeah. So here's my last question, unless somebody else has a question. I, let, let's, let's target somebody that their life is not really where they're wanting to go. Maybe they're stuck in the mud. Maybe they don't know what it is they need to do to get going the right way. What is one thing you can tell them, and I'm, uh, maybe you're gonna go right back to gratitude, but if you could tell somebody out there right now that see, because you never know who might see this. You never know how this could uh, affect someone. So what would you tell them 
Where do you start in your mind to just just get to highlight that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, and I, I hate to I hate to go here because it's like a Johnny Downer, but if you're stuck, you need to take a, a, a rear view mirror look. You need to reflect because if we're stuck, something's holding us back. And a lot of times, Tommy, it is either a past wound, mm -hmm. maybe some addiction, or fear. I found those three things stop most people. Past wounds, you're, you're unwilling to forgive somebody. You say, you never will know what they did. I understand. I had it happen in my life. In fact, I went down this journey at about 28 years old, two years ago. I finally forgave somebody unconditionally. And when I did, everything changed. I was writing this book with bitterness. I was writing this book with competition. I started down the journey, and two years whoa, ago. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What does that mean? With competition? What, what do you I, mean I was, I was still competing in my mind. Somebody in my past said, "You'll never do, you'll never be more than," and I was. My entire existence was to prove that person wrong, and I believe that most of our society has either past wounds that we are. Our entire life is this big loop. We keep looping, trying to prove somebody wrong. And then number two is we, because of that, we addict ourselves to different things. It could be food, it could be media, it could be pornography, it could be whatever. Uh, mine, was, mine was pornography. And uh, so I'm here addicted, I'm past wounds, I'm addicted. And then because of all that, and I wanted this facade, I had fear of what others think, thought of me. So you had past wounds, you have addiction to cover those, and then you have this fear of what everyone thinks. And so instead, instead of being able to walk in the gym, I just stayed away. I just mm -hmm. stayed unplugged. I didn't even run a race till I was 25. Didn't even run because I was just I was afraid to go and look like a failure if I didn't run right or something, you know. Instead of building me, I was going to be a you know out of shape person by the time I was forty because of the trajectory I was on. Mm -hmm. But because Michael Burke came in and said this ain't no practice life, I changed. Mm -hmm. And he, so you have to face the past wounds. Number one, I hate to like I said start there. It's tough. It's tough. But that's why I say you got to reach out and connect with somebody who cares about you because they're going to have to walk hold your hand walking down this journey. It's, gonna, it's tough to open the closet and look at the skeletons. But when you get somebody of faith or somebody around you, you can hold their hand and just get vulnerable, down in the mud, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Get with them and say, I need you to walk with me. Listen, I know I look like a perfect guy right here, but deep down inside, I'm struggling. Like Every day I'm on this thing struggling, and I need your help. And, I, dude, I've got a buddy right now. I've found this vulnerability, accountability thing is incredible, Tommy. Mm -hmm. I've got a buddy right now, man. We, we become so tight, so close. I'm like... Is it, man, friendship could be this, this good? I mean, he loves me for me. Mm -hmm. And when somebody finally gets around you to love you for you, you can forgive those past wounds. Mm -hmm. You can move past addiction. And then you can shatter fear and live in faith in your vision every day, creating value in this world. And it's not always going to turn out right. It's not always going to look pretty. It's not always going to work. Every day is not always going to be a joy. But when you're living in your vision, that will put a smile on your face because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you've made peace with your past, you have plans for your future, and no matter what, I'm going home. You know what I'm doing after this? Unplugging and a play day all day long with my kids. It's been busy, so to answer, play day all day long. They're they're at home when I left. They're like, "Are you coming right back?" I'm, I'm coming right back. We got a play date now. It's got a thunderstorm. I was planning to camp out, so we might have to camp in the garage. But you know what? You got you got to do that. You got to prioritize, unplug, prioritize, and slow down. Wait. But go make peace of your past. Hey, can we? Oh, okay, yeah. so can we keep you another nine hours today? Let, let's come back. So, let's do this so, again. So, no, we, 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 we like to. We like reoccurring. <laughs> so here's what I do want to do. I, I do. I do want to. Uh, maybe this can help you by getting other people that would hire to bring you in. So how do you help people? How do you help companies? So I worked for a corporation for ten years. Mm -hmm. I know the dragon on Monday. It's real. And that's actually why I decided to start Time for Energy. Mm -hmm. I said, I want Monday to be like it's Friday. It, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to do that. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's insanity. It's like, it's like a crime against yourself. Make it where you can charge in Monday. How do you do that? By getting the vision for your life, by realizing where you add value, by being okay with you, and then starting to realize, to changing everything to gratitude. Mm -hmm. I get to work here. So I come in to companies and I teach the three musts, perspective, and then taking extreme ownership, and then accountability. True, authentic, vulnerability, accountability. So those three musts is what I call to igniting your energy, your passion. And so I come into companies and teach those. I do a workshop, it's a three hour workshop, or I come in a keynote. So I'll be up in Nashville, uh, with NASP key, keynoting mm -hmm. Friday on the three months. So that's how I help organizations. So if there's igniting a energy, 
so they can increase engagement. So do you help individuals as well or is it just companies? Yeah, so I started coaching uh, 18 months ago just individuals and it just it, it overwhelmed me really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot of people and so I, I thought how can I reach more with less time? Yeah. So that's why I do the seminar, mm -hmm. Energy for Life seminar. We're taking that 16 times across Tennessee this year, the rest of this year. Um, so look for one in your city. We're coming to your city. Um, is there one coming here? We just did one on Monday. Yep, we're Dang. coming back in November. But we'll be All in right. Cool Springs June the 4th. Then we'll be in Nashville June the 11th. And then we'll be in Smyrna June the 18th. So we'll be close for June. So you can you can come. come How out. long are those seminars? Three hours. Three hours. Yeah, that's that's my same seminar I take to companies. Okay. Yep. All right. And then and then to, to coach, I coach executives. So I, I coach the guys who influence all, all you know all their people. Man, this has been fascinating. This has been awesome. How do they reach you? Like, I know timehooper.com. Do yeah, they can, yeah, there's an email. Uh, here's the email. It's real easy. It's um, need energy. Like, I need energy. Need energy at timeforenergy.net. Need energy at time for energy. We're going to put it right up there yeah, where people perfect. can find it. But everybody, if you like this, if you feel like Tim has influenced your thoughts, if he is starting to get something kind of inside of you, it's starting to activate Help him by sharing this stream. Thanks, you know, guys. This this was a this was free. Hey, I hope it was free. Huh? We might get oh, a bill. No, Kathy hey. told me sent you the bill. <laughs> but uh, but the way the way the way you can uh, pay him back is by spreading his message. You know, maybe you're not a client right now. Maybe you're not going to become a client. But you know, you could share this to somebody. Somebody may sit. One of Michael Burt's biggest clients he ever got was in a room of two people. And uh, somebody said, hey, let's just cancel it. And he went on with it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, one of his biggest clients ever came out of that class. So you never do know who might see this. Is that right, Tim? Need energy? That's it. Need energy at time. Actually, the number four. Sorry, oh, okay, I should have told you that. that. Number four. Uh, so need energy at time. The number four energy.net. Uh, and then, of course, you can go on timehooper.com. And that email's right there on the, on the front page there. So. Um, and thank you guys. I want you to thrive. I want you to feel alive all by yourself, all by yourself. You walk outside in the morning, just put your hand on your heart, realize you have life. And I don't want you just to live. I want you to be able to thrive. So it's fun. It's fun. Timmy. Timmy! Thank you so much. Love buddy. on your kids. Love on your people. Maybe, maybe we can bring you back in here more and more. I would like to do this. Yes, sir. I love it. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions before we shut this down? Cousin Charlie, what questions? You want to ask something, Cousin Charlie? Or are we good? Everybody, thank you. Have a great day. Woo!